in our application, we had to achieve about 40 transactions per second and 500, was ever, everyone was happy. So in other projects, to, it was able to, to, with a little optimization, you know, you have to, locks are always the problem. So the, this was locks as well, about 1,000 to 2,000 transactions per second. But you have to think about locking and so forth. But they are, they scales per se. So this, yeah. Um, and this was, by the way, uh, over IOP. In one project, we replaced IOP with uh, Hessian. Hessian is a, a performance pro uh, protocol and it was even better. So Hessian scales really, really good. Yeah. Are too complex. So thinking about this, what is complex? And uh, I guess the complexity comes from distribution. So we start building POJO architectures if you, with unit tests, you are actually done because uh, you are testing your application in uh, single threaded mode, right? There is no concurrency. So you are playing around with POJOs, starting them, everything works. And under heavy load, you will encounter some problems because uh, under heavy load, you will have several threads concurring with one shared resource. And this is the problem, the conceptual problem. You have one shared resource at the database. If you cache, if you cache the database somewhere else, you need a concept how to replicate and synchronize the database with the state. It has nothing to do with EGB. So and what EGB provides, some concepts like declarative transactions, which you will need anyway. So if you don't, what I see <laughs> too complex, in my POJO architecture they told me it was too complex. And what they did was the following. They had a servlet, struts. Then they built a filter, decorating filter, right? And the filter created transaction context, entity manager, everything, yeah? Then put it, uh, everything where they created, the whole context in thread local. So, then they wrote a whole document how to use the thread local because every developer had to access the resources via thread local, okay? And then they forgot, for instance, to close some resources and certain cir uh, um, circumstances like, for instance, uh, exceptions, and they had resource leaks. Yeah? But what they built, they built actually EGBs. And what I see in, uh, in Germany, what comes now, we have Tomcat deployed in, in operations, and what they do, they introduce open EGB. They deploy open EGB into Tomcat because they want to ha have would like to have transactions, concurrency, and this stuff. So this is a funny story. <laughs> Comes more and more. Uh, by the way, open EGBs and war. You can put it in top video of EGBs if you like. Um, so uh, distributed programming with shared state is always a challenge. So you can use .NET, PHP, or whatever you want. You have to understand the concepts. And if you understood the concepts, you can do go with Spring, uh, I don't know, Hibernate, EGBs, whatever you want. But I don't think that EGBs are complex by nature. And you have always, Always, uh, always differentiate between essential and accidental complexity. In distributed world, the essential complexity is very high because you need some concepts like locking, distribution, synchronization. And the accidental complexity does mean the, uh, the complexity which comes from the infrastructure framework is actually low in EGB3. In J214 it was higher because of the XML crap and generation home and remote interfaces, but this is everything is actually gone. Okay. Yeah, and uh, in the era of cloud computing and so on and this stuff, what, uh, what you always will need service level agreements, something like this, and monitoring. And uh, every bean which is deployed on the server comes with uh, JMX monitoring. So it has to expose the method and starts via JMX because of one, uh, one spec called JSR77, monitoring and management. So you can we, you can connect with every application server you want to with, for instance, JConsole or Visual VM, you know, JConsole or Visual VM, and, and monitor the server, for instance. It comes for free. There's nothing to do. And what I see in POJO's architectures, they say, okay, we do it later, and then, then they wrap POJO with aspects to expose JMX, and they, and they build the whole, uh, the whole server, you know, from scratch, believing it is simpler than using a framework. Okay. Oh. Now, EGBs are hard to integrate with web frameworks and POJOs. So, first one, Wicked. I use in my project Wicked because the HTML page was there. I'm not very skilled uh, HTML designer, so I just stolen the page from, from the web. So, and uh, you know <coughs> Wicked. So you can replace you can replace UI uh, UI controls 
uh, with component aliasing. So you have wicked ID and you have on the Java side the corresponding control and, and, and it parses for you. It's actually a server filter. What do you have to do in wicked? First, you, ha you have in the wicked application, you will, you, ah, where's my laser? Okay. So you need here the Java e component injector. This comes with wicked. This is the first, first guy. This is needed. And then, this is, I don't know why, but you have to declare this guys in, uh, in web XML. But this is actually not needed. I have to talk with the wicked guy why, why they do this. Because in GSF and other framework, it's not needed. But this is how wicked goes. For every reference, you need uh, one, um, one part here in XML. In my case, there are about 10 bins. So I have 10 such entries. But they, they, they not change. This is only the facades, you know. Only the facades to wicked. And this is how it works in the wicket. So I have the profile view. There is just a page, and I can inject my EGBs, and you are, and, and, and I'm done actually. Okay. So it's very simple. And what I gain? Again, transactionality, concurrency, and everything else. So if you if you um, are not using EGB, it will become pretty hard because the web pages get serialized, versioned, and so forth, and and they are not thread safe. So you need 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 to have a concept. Um, yeah, and EGB solve it. For me, JSF is even simpler. So it's just backing bean and inject the EGBs. This is what we did yesterday's Varstadt in every flavor. So um, just use the local interface or bean class, inject it, and you are done. So there's nothing to say. It's just, just this. So in servlets, yeah, the same story. Just inject it to servlets. Um, so the only challenge is you are not able to inject uh, stateful session beans to stateless servlets, of course, because the scope doesn't work. So you have to, uh, you have to know um, how to deal with that. Um, so why servlets? What I, what, I, what I do a lot, I use servlets to expose EGBs, and then I'm able to load test the application with JMeter, for instance. So I write my test code in doget, for instance. I expose this doget a single URL. And then with JMeter, you know JMeter, Jakarta JMeter, I can, I'm able to generate the load. And this is a very convenient, very fast way. So for instance, um, and POJOs. So um, questions so far? No questions? Everyone is happy? You know Wicket? Who uses Wicket? Wicket? JSF? Okay, so just after is no big deal. Just inject these guys. Um, yeah, what happens? So this, the next story is okay. You have EGBs, and but I have a legacy projects. So they are there. They are compiled. I do not have a source code. What to do? How to integrate legacy projects with EGBs? And um, yeah, what I did once there was actually one of my workshops. There was one. Uh, so lightweight guy say so okay EGB are crap because I'm just not able to to uh, to inject. And what I did this table model comes from Swing. You see here. And I injected to an EGB table model from Swing. It is not a best practice doing so. It was just a proof of concept whether it works. It worked perfectly. So um, what do I had to do? I had to specify in my this is the whole deployment descriptor. Okay, I have a bin name with an table, and the, and the business local is table model, and the bin implementation is default table model. And I, and I deployed a transactional table model, yeah? As EJB, it's just crazy doing so, but it's a very good proof of concept just to show how to integrate legacy projects. More legacy as a uh, table model you will not find in your project, believe me. So it is about, I don't know, JDK 1, 2, uh, 5, 10 years old, something like this. That's okay, but EJB 3.1, I do following. I inject the default table model in a servlet, okay, as a no interface view beam. So there is just injection without an interface, just straight injection. And I need a little bit XML as well. It's actually the same part. I say I have only the class without an interface, and this guy is stateless. 